And you are, hello? Adrian Gray. <laughs> Stone balancer. Stone balancer. Extraordinaire. <laughs> cool. How long have you been doing this? Um, for fun, a long time, years and years. But uh, just sort of taking off a bit sort of commercially, I hate to say it, but you know, um, for about a year now. Cool. <laughs> When you're doing on the side, um, which gives it that improbability, uh, there's a lot of friction involved as well. So apart from finding the balance, you've also got to weigh up the friction. So um, he's the only other guy who will take it seriously. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, those people have come up to me and said, you know, well, I've had a go at that on the beach, you know, like, you know just piling up rocks. Because it, it just makes, you know, it's a fascinating thing, you know. I just got obsessed by it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, people say to me, you know, um, can we have it in your garden and stuff? And I'm like, well, it will fall over if it's windy, you know. If you put it in a sterile environment, they will stay up indefinitely. Um, and I said, you know, I'll come back and I'll do a service contract and rebalance it, you know, <laughs> five times a year or whatever. But, um, no, I just, I just love, you know, the, the fluidity and the fragility together. You know, it looks solid, but you just know it could fall over. It's a living yeah. thing, that's the thing, you know. So how I could ever sell them with installations, I don't know. Yeah. I had a huge lifestyle change. I used to work as an exhibition leader and in Madagascar I got very ill and since then I've had all these weird sensitivities which will go completely against my nature, you know, sort of things sort of rough and tough stuff and uh, I had a complete lifestyle change. Uh, but, you know, thankfully I'm not as sensitive as I was. But, you know, I, I live in a house that runs on gas, I, you know, I, I don't watch TV and I don't use computer or mobile phone. I mean, I can do, but it just still makes me feel a bit ill, so... Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, after a few moments, you start, you start getting nausea and headaches and things like that. It's one of these weird modern illnesses, you know? I don't understand it, but um, made me adapt my whole life. But me, you know, I mean, I'd never have been a stone balancer if I hadn't, you know... Sure. Well, funnily enough, that's one of the main reasons I got into it, because I was told, you know, you know, I've got a, a complete lifestyle change. So I moved down to the coast to the old Victorian convalescent thing. <laughs> and um, uh, I wanted to learn to meditate, but, you know, I had such a short attention span, I never really got into it. Um, but then I started doing this, I realised that you have to focus 100%, you, know, you block out everything else. Yeah. And it's a definite form of meditation. Wow. And, you know, you really, sort of, really clears your head. And it's hard to play anything else. In saying that, some of these stones that I've balanced a few times now, I can carry on a conversation with people while I'm doing it. If I know the science, if it's a new balance, then I really have to sort of pop into it and give it my full attention. If you can pretty much balance any two stones, or yeah, will no, something yes. not... Unless they're really glassy surfaces where you don't get any friction. But even then, you can still do a point balance. I've got some flints that I use, which are really heavy, high density. And, yeah. Uh, and you can balance them on point balances, and sometimes on side balances as well. But generally, I mean, all these stones here, um, I could balance them on more or less any of those stones there. Yeah. So I, I go to the ones that sort of lend themselves to, to look interesting and impossible. Yeah. So that's why I call them. That far one in the corner is my favourite at the moment. I really like that one. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, the, the, yeah, the one that's sitting in the corner.